Hello, this is David Hartman from London Metropolitan University. In a previous presentation, I talked about Bayes' theorem, uh, showing how the basic calculation works. So Bayes' theorem basically is used to help us update our beliefs about things when we receive new information. In this presentation, I'm going to look at some alternative ways of representing uh, those Bayesian calculations. Um, it's not inherently different. The answers will be the same, but it's just a different way of representing the problem. So I'm going to pick up with the example that I used before, which is this example from uh, David Eddy, where he gave... Um, Originally, he gave 100 physicians the following information. So we've got a female patient who presents with a slight lump in her breast. Based on cases with a similar age, history, symptoms and physical findings, there's a 1% probability that she has cancer. If she does have cancer, then there is a 79.2% probability that a mammograph will detect this. In other words, she tests positive. If she does not have cancer, then there is 90.4% probability that the mammograph will give her a clean bill of health. In other words, she tests negative. And uh, remember, of course, this also means that there's a 9.6% probability um, that uh, if she does not have cancer, then the mammograph will actually give uh, a false positive. That is, it will indicate that there's cancer where it's not present. So what we want to know is, uh, you know, in this case, the woman undergoes screening and tests positive. What is the probability that she had cancer? So previously I showed how we can use Bayes' theorem to solve this particular problem or to give us a, a, an estimate, an updated estimate of probability in this instance. Now, when you've just got that verbal information to go on, uh, sometimes it's easy just to trip up, forget something, make a mistake. And so one way of trying to not do that is to construct a tree diagram. Tree diagrams are used to make all information completely explicit and to minimise our chances of uh, making a mistake. And in this instance, this is how the tree diagram would begin. We use a little circle here at the left-hand side to represent a region of uncertainty. Tree diagrams are actually sometimes uh, used in uh, decision-making procedures um, where they include squares, and the square will represent uh, a decision with dis different options emanating from it. But here we're simply using circles representing uh, just uncertainty. And here you can see we've got two branches of the tree, one representing the probability that cancer is present and another representing uh, the probability that cancer is not present. In other words, that the lump in the breast is benign. And we've attached numbers for those probabilities, 0 0.01 and 0.99. And from the topmost branch of the tree, we can add two further branches indicating the probability of getting a positive diagnosis when cancer is present and the probability of getting a negative diagnosis when cancer is present. And those, of course, should add up to 1. So 0.792 added to 0 0.028 add up to 1. And then in the lower half of the tree, again, positive and negative diagnoses conditional upon the lump in the breast being benign. Having constructed this tree, what we now need to do is multiply through the two sets of probabilities. The, we need to multiply the prior probability by the diagnostic probability. And that gives us these figures on the right-hand side here. And if we've done everything correctly, then Again, adding up the numbers on the right-hand side of the tree should give us the figure of 1. And because what we want to know is the probability 
that cancer is present given that there's a positive diagnosis what we need to look at is the figure on the right or the figures on the right hand side of the tree relating to positive diagnoses as opposed to negative and those figures are highlighted here and then we simply extract those and perform this calculation which is exactly the calculation that we did in the previous presentation with the formula for Bayes theorem and the answer here of course is then the same 0 0.077 so it's really just the same calculation all, all that's different here is that we've explicitly represented all possibilities in this tree diagram now there is a, another way of thinking about the Bayesian calculation and this is uh, the example on the screen here is taken from a paper by Gigeranzer and Hofraga published in 1995 um, again it's a paper that is worth reading they give um, uh, some uh, they give a theoretical rationale as to why people actually might find it easier to think about frequencies uh, which is what I'm talking about here so they've transformed this uh, from a problem using uh, probabilities into one using frequencies. So, as stated here, uh, the information says 10 out of every thousand women at age 40 who participate in routine screening have breast cancer. 8 of every 10 women with breast cancer will get a positive mammography. 95 out of every 990 women without breast cancer will also get a positive mammography. Here is a new representative sample of women at age 40 who got a positive mammography in routine screening. How many of these women do you expect to actually have breast cancer? And in this study the participants were asked to say something out of something else, to fill in the blanks. And what they found was that people um, were much more accurate given this frequency information than when they were given probability information. Now there are some authors who have uh, questioned this but it is um, you know, still an alternative way of representing the information. I'm not going to go into the sort of various theoretical and empirical uh, arguments uh, in the short space of time I have here. So again just looking at the information we've got here as before what we're interested in is just the positive diagnoses. How many in this uh, original sample have a positive diagnosis? Well it's 8 plus 95 equals 103. 103 women here got positive diagnoses. So uh, an out of that 103, eight of them were correct positive diagnoses. So if we encountered a new sample of women aged 40 who went for uh, screening, we would expect eight out of every 103 to have breast cancer. Uh, and what Gigerenzer and Hofrag have pointed out is that with this frequency information, the calculation that you have to do is a much simpler calculation. You don't, for example, have to keep track of the base rate information, or you don't have to keep track of the prior probabilities. All you look at here is the number of women who obtained positive diagnoses, and then ident identify the number of those who got a correct positive diagnosis. So again, I'll just leave you with uh, the references. Again, the David Eddy reference from 1982 and this reference for Gigerenza and Hofrager.